Generic greetings, fellow citizens of the internet. This is, of course, Richard, and today I bring you another episode of FOV. Off camera, I enchanted a very mediocre pick, and now I am back up at level 30 again after doing some grinding, and I am going to enchant another one and hopefully get something better. Spoiler alert, I have Silk Touch, and so I am going for Fortune. I, did you hear that? Did you hear that, computer? Did you hear that, com computer? I'm, I'm going for Fortune 3. Hear that? Okay. How about, how about some Fortune 3? Fortune 3. Are you kidding? <laughs> Alright. At this point, I'm actually starting to get onto the low side of diamonds, so I'm probably going to start... Um, and I really don't want to mine too many more, so I'm probably going to actually start enchanting books so that I don't waste those diamonds and waste more diamonds harvesting the ore blocks without fortune. Because I really don't want to do too, more, too much more of that, because it's just a waste. It's just a complete waste of time and energy and everything and so forth and so on. Uh, waste of non-renewable resources. So, at this point in time, I will probably be proceeding with the recap of what happened last episode, because, of course, the audio got completely screwed up and wonky and so forth, and probably a decent chunk of people didn't want to watch that. I know I probably would not have, because it would have been annoying as hell. So, uh, continuing momentarily with that. So, first off, I encountered this Wild Vetches, uh, who appears to have spawned here. These true Wild Vetches, anyone could see. Uh, no, I'm not sure if he clipped through the door. He could escape. Don't want that to happen. He looks like he's in a bad mood today. But, alright, he's fine. So, he's... Incredibly rare. These guys hardly ever sp like they they never spawn essentially, and it's absolutely incredible that I've found one in my world. Um, like I, I've I've never like I said last video like I've never seen a vetches before except in you know videos. Uh, but so that that's absolutely amazing and. Uh, again, like I said last video, I know he gives some decent drops, uh, but there is no way I'm going to kill him. He's just way too rare, so he's definitely going to find a place in his... Um, he's definitely going to have a place in this world, and I'll probably make a little house for him, probably in the village over there. It's going to be great. Um, and the cool thing was, like, it was right over here. Like, that's the, that's the um, cartographer's cradle right there. And he's just, like, right over the hill. Uh, it's just mind-blowingly amazing. Uh, so that, that, that just totally kind of blew my mind when I encountered it. Um, I didn't realize that they spawned in their own little Saurian sign-out shelter. It's quite neat. Uh, but then over here, if the chunks is load, uh, you will see that I've been working over here as well. Um, and this is specifically, if I come down here, this is, of course, the skeleton spawner, which I found the other day. Again, the chunks would appear to have great amounts of fun not actually loading for me. I'm going to go ahead and try and make them load. Okay, good very much better. Uh, so there's a cave down here that I haven't actually explored yet, haven't bothered, this appears to be safe at this point, nothing can climb up, so I'm fine with that. But this is all set up so that you can sort of see the spawner, but light can't get in uh, as usual, so forth and so on. Um, there's water currents all over the place that send the skeletons up so that they can shoot at me through the holes that I conveniently left for them. Uh, needless to say that it's the design is somewhat flawed, um, but then they are right down to, you know, somewhere around one hit, sometimes less, sometimes more. It seems to be kind of dodgy, but I'll get the kinks worked out eventually. Um, and I've been storing some loot in here 
Now I've been expanding the place a bit and so forth. Eventually, my plan is to get this all above ground. So I'll just cut away all of this. Like, that's actually just beneath... E. Didn't mean to do that. Um, like, that's just a couple layers beneath the grass itself. And I'll just go ahead and um, cut all that away and make this basically a surface feature and just make it all level around here. But, so that's the general plan here. Then what else? I guess I will cut back over the next thing that I did. I can't actually remember what I did next. Another thing I did last episode was I did build a portal and I did check out the nether very briefly. Haven't done much in there yet, but I did build up to the ceiling and made myself a little room. I haven't actually been back there yet. I plan to expand that into a full nether hub and so forth. Especially with 1.7 coming out, I imagine I will be exploring a whole bunch and finding a bunch of really cool things that I want to link to and the nether is going to probably be the most practical way to get around. So that's how I'm going to plan on doing that. And... Let's see. Oh, and then the other thing that I had been working with was... Uh, these monstrosities, which I have a better design now, uh, which is actually reliable. Um, but the general idea behind these is they are actually horse stables. And if you check this out, this block right here, it toggles its position when I do this. So now it's down, now it's up. And what this means is a horse can exactly fit into this position right here between this hitbox right here and the slab when it's down and right between these two fence posts. I'm smaller than a horse so I can fit right through but a horse would be completely stuck and wouldn't be able to move more than like, you know, pixel or something. Um, and it works on the same principle as Etho's design, uh, basically horse is in here and the slab is down so it's trapped I get onto the horse and it toggles letting the horse go that let me demonstrate it this way slab is down I get on the horse that puts my hitbox through the tripwire opens it up lets me ride out on my horse then I come back and my hitbox hits the tripwire again which traps the horse and I can get off at my leisure so it's nice, it works pretty well, but this design is flawed in as much as it takes advantage of a really derpy redstone mechanic that I have since made a video on. Um, and, you know, which I have managed to sidestep with my newer design, which I will be replacing all of those things with soon enough. Uh, also, I was realizing that horse travel really isn't practical if you don't have roads. For example, there is a very large river here, and horses don't like water. They really don't like water, like, at all. Uh, the thing is, if you try and ride a horse in three deep water or deeper, the horse will just kick you right off without any, you know, warning or anything. I mean, well, it's in water, you should by rights have warning, but it's it'll just sort of kick you off unceremoniously into the water and swim away in some random, unpredictable direction that almost always seems to be the direction that you don't want to go. Uh, so um, I have had very bad luck with horses, and as a matter of fact, uh, partially as a result of that, my horse is currently down at the bottom of a ravine. Uh, that's not due to the water mechanics, but just simply to the fact that I was having problems. And that segues very nicely into my next cup topic of conversation. Uh, I honestly don't know why I came here, but it's... sure, it's a good place to be, I guess. Uh, I'll look at the pretty horses while I talk. So, I was looking forward to... <laughs> um, alrighty, that was, that was interesting, oh, oh, okay, alright, alright, don't know exactly to make of that, but cool, 
Uh, so I was I was really looking forward to this episode, as I think I mentioned, uh, because I got the Silk Touch pick, and that meant that I was able to start up on a project that I've been really wanting to do. Well, not quite. See, I found a uh, ba basically for the idea that I want to do. I need a witch hut. Now, some of you are probably thinking, "Haha, yes, I know exactly what he's planning on doing," and it's about twelve times more complicated than whatever it is you're probably thinking. Unless you're coming back in time and watching this after I've already done whatever it is that I actually am going to do. In which case you're probably actually right because you're cheating. But if you are actually just guessing right now, then you are probably completely wrong. Uh, let me see if I can find something productive to do. I will poke ineffectually at this dirt wall over here because I can at least spotlight the fact that I am going to be ow. I am going to be shaping all of this area. Uh, so basically, I do need a witch hut for my plans, and I was really excited because I also needed silk touch, and that was the missing piece because I had actually found a witch hut uh, in my adventures off camera, and so I knew I'd be able to start work on the project. Well, not quite. Because, the thing is, as it turns out, that witch hut was completely in a river biome. It, the entire structure was in a river biome, which meant that it was basically useless to me. Um, I'm not actually sure if those would actually, like, witch huts in river biomes, uh, I'm not sure if they would still spawn witches. I'm don't think they do, but regardless, they also spawn other mobs, which is something I definitely don't want. So, for all intents and purposes, that one was useless to me. And frustratingly, I also found another one on my way to try and find the first one again, uh, when I was going back to investigate it further. Uh, and that one was also completely in a river biome. So, um, really unfortunate luck in that regard and I will have to keep looking and I might do some of that off camera uh, or I might actually do it on camera later this episode and just make a big show out of exploring for a while but I am not totally sure one way or another we shall see and hopefully I will be able to get that straightened out and actually find a way to do what I want to do because if I can make it happen it will be an amazing sort of project thing and once completed it will lead to only more opportunities and amazing wonderful entertainment and so forth oh and there's there's a there's this thing over here which i can mention which i have built off camera between episodes um not totally happy with it really in the least but as things go forward, I'll probably keep tweaking and so forth. This will be the first house in this village that I have built myself. Um, and it is reasonably nice. Uh, I've actually got more to add to it in bits and pieces, so it's not totally, not totally finished. But as you might be able to guess from the decor, this is actually going to be vet the um, house for the vetches uh, once I am able to move him in and so forth. It will be a delicate procedure I imagine because he seemed kind of obstinate uh, when I met him last but hopefully he won't give me too many problems and hopefully he won't pester the other villagers around. Uh, I hope he'll be able to get along and live a happy sort of life alongside them and not make any trouble. We shall see. We shall see how that ends up working out. Uh, so yes, where do I want to go with this next? Um, I did... I actually made a map uh, earlier, which is actually back at my backstage base over there. Uh, 
I did make a map of this general area for sort of a sky view, but it didn't end up working out as well as I might have hoped, just because in order to get everything in view, I sort of needed to zoom it out really far, and just, you know, in order to cover the entire area, I ended up zooming it out really far, so you can't really see much on the map itself, which is disappointing, but I might redo it at some point and have it at the next down scale of magnification uh, so as to hopefully capture more of the features and so forth if I can place the center better and that kind of thing but that is as maybe and I was also considering scaling a map way out and exploring it on camera or at least partially on camera uh, so as to you know explore more of the area I might do that now or at least set off on doing that now because that would be a decent project to embark upon uh, yes it was in here empty map may as well grab this one as well so this was excuse me so this is the um, map as it is you can see where I am right now there's sort of a stone rectangle there um, that is this sand pit here uh, down sort of to the left down that direction if you look my where my cursor is pointed uh, down there that is the village uh, and then uh, sort of yeah direct more or less direct somewhere between that way and that way at the base of that mountain there with that lake is you can't really see it this, that's the cartographer's cradle and then further down than that near that bear patch uh, in those hills somewhere is the binary base but like I say it doesn't really stand out too well but regardless I guess I will go ahead and where should I center this thing I guess you know what I'll center it here why not uh, I'll center it more or less in this area and that actually looks kinda cool on the map neat uh, and then let's see I'll drop off this map so I don't get confused I'm gonna need more paper do I have more I must have more paper around here yes I have potential paper this potential paper can be made into paper easily enough and now I'll just go ahead and this is scaling at 1 to 1 level 0 out of 4 I will go ahead and not shift click I've actually wasted a decent amount of paper on this because it still isn't fixed if you shift click this map out of here it will actually not do anything to the map and just consume the paper so watch out for that if you're scaling maps uh, instead you have to actually click it out and like that so that's one out of four I'm just gonna go ahead and scale this all the way the heck out wait what I beg your pardon oh okay there it goes three four and four four so that should do it and now this should be bloody massive yeah alright so I'm gonna get on towards exploring bits and pieces of this I guess and then I will get back with ya I have no idea how long this is gonna take or if I'll find anything interesting worth recording along the way that'll end up padding this episode out or if I'm just gonna end up cutting to a full map with nothing interesting to show for it which would be depressing but uh, regardless I guess I'll get to this and we'll see where that takes me this is worthy of mention I would suppose uh, as you can see roughly on the map here uh, from where I started I've sort of gone round in ways and so forth I found this thing right about here single block it's rather nice clean sort of effect wide open no blocks around to make it difficult to build around or anything almost certainly gonna do something with this looks cool I'm liking the look of this 
delightfully impossible. I love it. All right, back to exploring for a bit more. Uh, I've been sort of trying to go all around this. I guess it's a lake uh, next to the village. Let me get back to it. It's right over this ridge here. Uh, right, yeah, this thing here. It looks as though it is, in fact, a lake. Isolated and so forth. The world would load. Boop do. Okay, whatever, fine then, be that way. Ow, it wasn't water. Ugh. But, so, yeah. Very good. Back to exploring. Check back with you. What is that? What is that? Seriously, what is that vertical shaft? What is that vertical shaft? I'm gonna see if I can figure this out. That... I am intrigued. I wanna know what the heck that is. I'm actually gonna leave fraps going for now so that I can get more chunk errors. Wait, it's gone. Was it... Is that a chunk boundary? Oh, it might just have been a chunk boundary or something. Ah, uh, okay. Huh. Alright, well, back to exploring. Well, just to the north of where I just was, I found these very interesting, you can see roughly where I am, right, sort of like across the lake there would be the Crown of Gerardus. All these exposed ledges, all this bare stone, don't know quite what to make of it, but it's kind of interesting in the middle of the jungle here. Nothing too spectacular. This has been pretty boring actually, all things considered. <laughs> A lot of fall damage, but nothing much more interesting than that. Alrighty folks, so that was more or less underwhelming. Uh. And I think that I'm actually going to round off the episode more or less here, given that I did not really find anything too much interest. However, I am going to use just three more diamonds, see if I get something better. One more level 30 enchantment for finishing this off. Again, Fortune 3. Whatever. <laughs> See you guys next time.